interaction between them is very uh, instructive because then finally in 1932, Dirac, I mean Fermi, produced a real theory of the Doppler effect in the quantum mechanical point of view. And he wrote six Hamiltonians and he quantified motion from the point of view of quantum mechanics. I have never heard anything like that before, but it was 1932. I'm going to talk again about this. So, with the provision of the quantum mechanicians, we can say that the atom can process by Doppler effect the photon to the proper dimensions and then absorb it. Okay, so let's that take us a working hypothesis. That being the case, what I, uh, no, I need the, uh, <coughs> um, yeah, the, the recession. The cloud is now moving away. So, uh, I already said it, right? Uh, yes. The 670 becomes shrunk to 656. It's absorbed at 656, and then it, the 670 cannot go to Earth. So we see the line at 670. So we say, oh, the cloud is going away with this loss. And that is not the interpretation, except that nobody worries how can you absorb 670. You see? And I did worry, as a humble, Astronomy teacher, but with some knowledge of physics, <coughs> they don't care about it. Just the same thing. The cloud is going away. Okay. So <coughs> that being my solution, you see, the cloud absorbs the emitted 670 and emitted radiation in the form of 656 radiation as shown by the doppler. That's my conclusion. Now we keep going. <coughs> um, okay. That was the nebula alone moving with respect to Earth. Now, this is the problem. The, the emitter is not a quasar, far away. It's the star itself, and the filter or the absorber is the atmosphere. And they're going to go away from us at the same velocity. So now there's no relative. This is the problem. Okay, so I'm going to apply the same solution as before in this situation. If there's no motion, again, no problem. You have source of the a little by the star, the atmosphere swallows it, and then there's a dark light. Okay? Now, when we put motion into the story, the same thing happens. The, cloud, the star emits 656 stretched to 670. Now, the atmosphere cannot swallow 670, but the atmosphere perceives 670 as 656, and then it can swallow it. Again, you see the, the atmosphere is shrinking while the star stretches. So there's a, do a double Doppler effect. So the atmosphere believes that the photons are simply to see this fictitious wave. But in effect, by the Doppler at the cloud, the 670 are shrunk back to C56. And then it's absorbed. But the light that keeps going to Earth is a dark spot at 670, because this is the one that has been eaten by the by the atmosphere. Okay? So here's our 670, everybody's happy, oh, that star is going away at this velocity, and they don't realize that the detector, the atmosphere, and the emitter are moving together. And there's a Doppler effect without that That's my, and that's what connected me with the Brazilian astronomy. But let's process this a little bit. So the, the 656 nanometer waves are redshifted to large to 670, like I, I draw here. In the space between the star and the atmosphere, this is crucial. This is happening between the star and the atmosphere. And also all the way to Earth, there's a stretch of all the other wavelengths, including the 670. Uh, does the atmosphere absorb 670, the atmosphere? It cannot, according to one So what happens is, as the atmosphere moves with the star, is that the 670 waves are perceived by the half atoms as 656 shorter due to the upper shrinking since they travel against the light. You see? You travel against light, you're going to shorten it. That's the key thing. Due to the upper uh, against the light. And as 656 photons, the half and atmosphere can absorb them. Although for Earth, they disappear, leaving a hole at the 670 line. Okay? So there's a double Doppler effect. The star and the 56 is stretched because it starts going out and the light is going in the opposite direction, 180 degrees. So there's stretch away from it. Now the atmosphere is the opposite. It's going against the light, so it shrinks 670 back to 656. Happy, uh, hydrogen atoms are happy. They 
in the same 56, but the light really that goes to Earth is 670. So the whole is at 670. Okay. Okay, so keep going on. Now it's easy. We start moving on. This is a repetition of what I said. The interpretation by classical is that there are two steps for the classical Doppler. So even though the emitter and the detector velocity are equal, yes, a, a detector in the atmosphere will perceive no change. That's what you were saying, though, uh, um, Cynthia. She was saying this from the point of view, well, I don't know what your theory is. A classical theory will say, no, if you are traveling with this star in the atmosphere, you perceive no Doppler. Right. You don't perceive it, but it exists in between. That's the difference between detecting and existence, between numbers and physical explanation. Okay? So, this is the two steps. Uh, uh, let's see. This is again repetition of what I said. You see, this is the way it's to change it. Oh, no. Okay, keep going. This is just an equation. Now, relative. So far, I've seen that classical theory, that this double Doppler effect can solve the problem. How about relative? Okay. Relativity says, there's no Doppler. This is moving with this, the equations, no relative velocity. So C56 is perceived by the hydrogen atom, like C56, no, no problem. Like classical theory, but they, they don't accept that there's a Doppler here, okay? Of course, there's a Doppler. From the point of view of Earth, the stretching happens from the very beginning. So it's like a double answer. From the point of view of the star atmosphere, there's no Doppler. From the point of view of the observer at the Earth, there's Doppler. Again, the typical duality in relativity theory. And we never know, but is there any Doppler here in this space, physical space, separated by two instances of time? So, for relativity, there's absolutely no Doppler effect between the star and the atmosphere, uh, 656. <coughs> the atmosphere could absorb 656, so there's no problem, as you said, uh, Cynthia, but that will produce a dark line at 656, not at 670. If you absorb 656, how come the dark line appears at 670? There's no further Doppler shift, there's no emission. This is a, okay? Even if you, okay, but you might, might uh, shift the other one, let's keep going. Doppler exists only between the star of the and Earth, producing 670 in large demand. So the question is made, how and where those 670 nanometer folks are absorbed? The redshift of 670 waves, as seen from Earth, cannot be absorbed by the hydrogen atmosphere. Again, quantum mechanics violated. So somebody in the Earth says, oh, 670 is here. So that cannot be absorbed by the star. Okay. Relativity said, oh, no, there's no shift. I absorb C56. But then the dark line should be in C56. Because the rest of the, of the process doesn't shift that line. Or maybe it shifts, it appears shifted. Because of the background. And so let's see. That's the web one solution. Let's keep going. This is the equation of relativity I already mentioned. Uh, keep going. Uh, oh, because you can use it between emitter and detector of the star or, or between the star and Earth. Okay, there's a double viewpoint. Uh, let's keep going. Um, okay, this is the hybrid answer. I call it hybrid because this man from NASA, even though he's not invoking relativity theory, he is actually using it. Okay, so this is the idea that the neighboring wavelength shifts. Okay, so let's replace this answer. The answer given by web one to a student is that the 656 photons are absorbed as the star atmosphere as it should be. Okay, no problem. But then the whole white light, rainbow, is shifted to the red. This is the, the gray, right? this is the white or gray light. All of them are shifted. So this background spectrum shifts everything. Uh, everything from 400 to 700. For example, it goes to 409 and 700 to I calculated 715. Give the impression that the absorbed 656 line is located at 670, you see? It's really absorbed here, but it looks like since the rest shifted, it appears 670. That's exactly what you said, right? And what I'm saying. Okay. If that is the case, however, look at the emission between the star and the atmosphere here, crucial area. There is a Doppler shift for all radiation, white line, except for 656. <laughs> How can that be? How can we need? You say that everything is shifted. Okay, so everything includes C56 before absorption. Is no. 66 is not, not shifted? Yeah. Is it shifted or not? If you say that all of them are shifted, why C56 is not shifted? Everything is shifted. Nothing is shifted until you get to the atmosphere and then shifted up. 
No, the shift occurs at the emission.